missing to sit in again? It's great to be back. Uh, obviously, with COVID, we were delayed a couple years there, but uh, good to be back at Oakdale. Uh, it's you know great spot to golf, and it's it's amazing how many people came out to volunteer and help out, and how many people donated, and uh, you know just uh, it's amazing to see the support. What's it like being back in Toronto as a member of the Oilers? In general? <laughs> yeah, it's it's weird for sure. For the first summer back, um, it's busier than uh, than I than I thought. You know, you're gonna go to Edmonton for for a year. It was just me and, and my immediate family, and then you know you come back and you have your whole extended family, all your other friends, and uh, it's busier. So it's uh, it's it's nice to be back for a little bit. Um, and you know, I, I love being here in the summer. Doc, you, you said that the Edmonton experience was kind of everything you thought it would be, maybe more. How much of that did you relate to to Jack Campbell before he, he signed? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's you know he it's it's tough. I went through the same kind of decision the year before, and everybody thinks it's so exciting and, and amazing, uh, and it is. But there's also the element you know of uncertainty and and going to a new environment. So um, just tried to convey my experience as best as possible and uh, and and just be on, open and honest with him about uh, how I felt about Edmonton and and uh, yeah, you know I think everybody's situation is different but for me like I said it was uh, it was the perfect fit. What kind of person and goaltender are the Oilers getting? Uh, I mean Mark can tell you. <laughs> nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> no just uh, an, an amazing person uh, yeah very nice guy um, You'll, you'll. I mean, he'll be here later today, so maybe we get a chance to meet him if you haven't already. But just a, a great person first and foremost, and then from a, as a goaltender, just somebody who tries to kind of push the envelope and and push his abilities as far as he can, just with his work ethic. Uh, and I think that'll fit really seamlessly into the the group that we have here, and just extremely talented and competitive, uh, and just a great addition for us. If you haven't been a starting goaltender in Toronto, you think that that'll help going into another pressure cooker? Is for sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, it's based uh, Mark Masters' questions, so oh, you can. Okay. <laughs> 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 I'm just joking. No, he, he uh, yeah, I think being in, in the Toronto, yeah, I think I, I, I think when you play in a Canadian market, you're, you're more used to playing um, in that pressure cooker, like you said, and, and he's had experience in it. How different do you think the Battle of Alberta is going to be with the changes Calgary's made, Johnny and Matthew leaving? What was your reaction to that? Yeah, um, definitely uh, didn't see it coming so quickly, obviously, with the changes uh, that were made there. But uh, I've only been in it once, and I don't think it matters who's on either side. The Battle of Alberta is uh, the Battle of Alberta. It doesn't matter who's playing in it. It's going to be crazy. We talked Ta last week about it. Um, since then, they went back and Kachuk uh, for Huberto. Uh, how surprised were you when you heard about that trade? Especially. Want 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 want. As you know. <laughs> yeah. To repeat. I got half of it. Yeah yeah. But uh, but you know with Kachuk getting traded for for Huberto, it's it's very rare that you see. Top, two top ten scorers traded for each other, so mm -hmm. that in itself brings another ingredient to the Battle of Alberta. For sure, yeah, I think uh, it's crazy, right? You don't you don't expect a trade like that to happen. It rarely does in hockey, but uh, I think it's, it's definitely exciting for fans and fan bases. And um, yeah, I mean Calgary got just really good players, so it's gonna be it'll be uh, it'll be fun. Zach, Talk what about it Jack? What about right. getting? Uh, what about getting Evander Kane uh, re-signed mm. to, to your group yeah. again? No, he's uh, obviously, everybody saw his importance and what he's able to do on the ice. So bringing a guy like that back uh, who's able to contribute the way he does was, you know, I think extremely important. Can you talk about the tournament a little bit? Um, sure. You're giving uh, attention to the Jewish causes. Uh, yeah. Maybe you want to talk a little bit about what sure. that means to you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, so obviously, the, yeah, yeah, no, I will. Don't worry. Sure. I, 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 I will. Um, I think obviously the, it's the, this tournament for us is, is extremely important. Uh, like I said before, it was uh, you know, two years off because of COVID and we have incredible sponsors led by the cooperators. Uh, Jason Bird is a good friend uh, of, of, of ours, really just le donating to great causes. Uh, the Sick Kids and, and the UJ being the, the two main benefactors and um, growing up 
uh, in the Jewish community, I think you, you learn about giving back and it was something that was really important to me. Um, learned about it, my parents you know, taught me about it, uh, teachers, family, everybody. So I think that that's just a, an important value um, growing up in the Jewish community and, and being in Toronto and having roots here. Um, you always want to be able to, to give back and, and sit kids and, and the work that they do for, for kids uh, all across Ontario and, and the world. I think uh, it speaks for itself every year when I was on the Leafs, we'd go and do a visit there. So uh, it really puts things into perspective. And I think, uh, I think it's just amazing the amount of people that are out here, volunteers, um, people who are donating just to, to support those causes. Uh, it's pretty special. Can you describe what it's been like to become part of the Edmonton Jewish community? I saw yeah. you on a crane at Hanukkah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, it's great. It's a smaller community than Toronto, obviously, uh, but it's close knit, and uh, it was it was very nice of them to invite me to to go and have that honor um, for Hanukkah. And uh, yeah, it was it was special, and it was it was cool to be able to meet a bunch of the members of the community at that event. Back to special event, obviously for a special cause, but the root of it all is golf. How's That's the game? right. How's the game? My game is not very good. Um, I'm playing with Connor, so I've been on him to uh, to carry our team. So we'll see. He, he said he's going to get on the range early, so we'll see if he's there. I don't is know. The reports player? say that Connor's not too. Uh, not too <laughs> I know. The greens. Uh, that's what Leon says, so we'll, we'll find out. I golfed with him at the, at the last tourney we did, so Leon's pretty good. I'll see if Connor's any good. Have you been trying to improve for the past two years? Me? Yeah. Oi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had a kid, so that doesn't help my uh, my golf time. And then I have another one coming, so that doesn't help it either. Uh, so I'm rusty, to say the least. Exactly. Fair. Yeah. Sorry, just one more hockey question, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. No, of course. Uh, obviously, there's... A lot of talk about this championship window uh, coinciding with McDavid and Dry's other contracts. Of course, you're there long term. Uh, the work that Ken Holland did so far this summer, what kind of message does that send to this team right now in the present moment for the next handful of years? I think that he believes in the group, bringing the you know the majority of the pieces back. Obviously, we had guys who are, are, are older and Dunk, Dunk's retired, and, and Smitty is was you know had a long career and he's pretty banged up. So. Um, but just bringing back the group and, and identifying that you know if, if Smitty you know isn't available you know we needed a goaltender and number one goalie and bringing in, in Jack to, to be that to be that guy I think just shows that he has confidence in, in our group and um, in our ability to win now so I think that just uh, motivates everybody to, to kind of take it to the next level and, and don't be satisfied with uh, where we were last year. To that end, you made it to the final four. How? close did it feel and how far away did it feel and how, yeah how hungry did it make you? yeah I mean when you look back it was you get, you get swept so it feels uh, like you were far but when you kind of analyze to those games it was really only that game two that kind of I thought that they really um, won the other ones were one goal games that could have gone either way so just the the margin for for error in the playoffs is so so thin especially when you get down to the final four so just take advantage of it it's, it's hard to get there Sorry? Playing with him and being around Connor that yeah. you didn't know before. Uh, just the person he is. Obviously, I think when you play against him, when I was in that North Division, we played him like nine or ten times, so you saw him a ton. Uh, you just see his, his elite ability and his ability to do things that nobody else can. And then when you get to train with him and be around him every day and, and just get to know him, you just see that it's not – just God-given talent. It's something that he works on every single day and, and something that he pushes uh, himself to be the best version of, of himself. And I've said it before, but it's, it's, it's easy when you're chasing a guy and when you're the, when you're the front man and you're, you're the best in the world, you got to keep pushing yourself and making sure that you're, you're the best. And he's got a, an un uncanny ability to do that. So, cool. Okay, thanks. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, great seeing you, everybody.